everyone and welcome back to game one of the grand finals you're watching torch up against cloud nine hyper rex currently cloud nine is going to be sitting in a great spot in the seeding points there in second place 220 points torch is sitting at 90 so they're far behind but a first place win today would be huge for torch on the bottom side of the map we're going to see high rock on Thantos in the jungle fun ball playing on her on the hunch roll spoo on changa emilito on bacchus shadow nightmare on zeus and they're looking for something in the jungle you know like i said they're hungry on the torch side they're gonna invade they did they didn't quite catch sail but this is gonna be cloud nine on the top of your screen Again, we're seeing Zalia start off with this Stone of Gaia. Now, this time on Baby, we saw him start on a Hercules, and it went well for him. Yeah, it certainly did. I mean, that, that Stone of Gaia start is a little bit undervalued uh, for the reason that, you know, people – it's a different play style. You can't get super aggressive. You can't get, uh, you know, jumping in and using your HP pool uh, to your advantage. But if you start doing more hit-and-run style, the regeneration you're going to get from Stone of Gaia is going to help out a lot. So I think it changes this state of mind. Uh, it's a controversial pick, no less, but it's something that, you know, Zelia has been favoring as well as Game Hunter in the last match. And we've been watching players picking out that Stone of Gaia more and more with the protection and regeneration. And also the fact that it does give you a good amount of MP5 as well, keeping you, uh, you know, stable in the soul lane, keeping your mana pool up in between blue buffs. We're going to see an Eye of Providence 2 start uh, from Sun Touch and just going for regeneration. You know, that's funny because usually in the past we've seen him not buy Eye, and now he's opted for Eye 2. <laughs> I guess he's jumped back in full steam into the Eye, uh, the eye train here. He uses it to counter the enemy jungle. He just keeps warding the buffs. Right, I mean, this is not going to give him sentry wards, but this is going to give him wards at the 60-second mark as opposed to 90-second mark. So that's definitely going to be more in favor uh, of him. But, you know, go across the side, and we don't see Emilito with any eye. I mean, he's, he's basically just putting wards down out of his pocket. Shenheimer disconnecting here from Torch. They're waiting for him to get back into the game. Uh, we also have this, uh, you know, the different start for the mid lane that's been starting up as well. Uh, Bancroft's Talon 1 costs 540 gold and replaces the 600 gold boots of old. Gives you 20 magical power and 4% magical life still, although generally is left alone for long periods of time. Your item progression is slowed, but gets you a good early game start. How do you feel about the Vampiric Shroud Bancroft's Talon start for mages? Honestly, I think the Bancrofts is a little risky. It's going to give him some magical power, but having that early, uh, I guess, push or rather early movement speed that comes out is a little more safe. So it looks like Shadow Nightmare is going to go for a more greedy build here. Uh, more interestingly, I love the pickup of Heavenly Agility. It's something that I like to start as well uh, when I'm when I'm doing three v three, when I'm doing uh, Joust or things like that. I mean. Getting sprint at max at level one is amazing, and being able to get heavenly agility for your team, especially on a character like Junga, who will also increase the healing overall, is just such a strong pickup. It really is. The movement speed is incredible. I mean, you're able to get the extra healing off as well. Uh, it's such a useful item, and you know, people really like valuing the creeping curse, weakening curse, and you know, and any uh, combination of their, uh, their that item together. But you know, I feel like people just aren't giving enough credit to heavenly agility. We see characters like John Quay uh, activated as well. Uh, Ra and Changa also using it to high effect. So uh, you know, it, it's an awesome item that doesn't get the respect that it deserves, uh, but certainly is going to be picked up today a lot. We're going to see the right side of the map, Changa and uh, Thanatos are going to right over to the blue buff. No damage buff yet. Looks like they're going to start blue and maybe go solo the red afterwards. Uh, a little bit of a different uh, progression here in the buffs. This is a safe start. It gives more experience to High Rock, and this is always going to allow him to go back for the red buff and give that away or take it himself oh, later on. Sun Wukong sure. steals the movement speed to start out with Sun Touch. It's, how many supports are going to steal buffs today? That's the third time we've seen it today. Before My level God. five. That move speed is now gone there. So across the way, Thanos is going to have to wait for that. Looks like Imagine Issues on the right side. Impale on Sun Touch. He joins back in. And the right side, Zalia getting harassed heavily. He is. He took a Death Scythe. He took a Soul Reap. He's taking all kinds of Crescent Moon dances. And he's getting pretty low. Hyrock about to hit level three. Should he land that Death Scythe? He's going to get real close to death. And he throws it a Hail Mary. Doesn't quite connect. But he puts the fear of God in that little baby. And he's going to back up. Try to keep himself safe. Mono's going to keep the regeneration alive, and once he finishes that stone of guy, he'll be able to harass very effectively and not worry about uh, the follow-up as long as he doesn't get dropped down too low. And in combination with his ultimate Colossal Fury, that regeneration is going to be insane. Left side, box cover the belly pump gets stunned out by the cat, but looks like the spear arrow's not going to land. 
Emelito gets a saving grace here as level three comes out from Fumball and Emelito. Very low on HP. Suntouch looking for the Jingle Bank. It's a double hit. Suntouch is playing so well today. You know, they, that's what happens. You line yourselves up. It's not a very difficult move to land. It's a huge hitbox. You're able to sure. swing it even after casting. And they this is the power of it. They get the double hit. It's not really affecting fun ball too much. Heals himself back up quickly. But Emelito already super low. Yeah, that prevents him from jumping in. That's the biggest thing. If you focus the Guardian in the 2v2 lane, it prevents the initiation to follow up with. It looks like uh, they're going to go for the mid camps here on either side. Agni's here already. for Ferostiak is going to go for some basic attacks there. Uh, make sure the Winions do clear it out. The babies are singing out with the Broodlings, making sure that those mid camps are split up evenly. The Gold Graph is slightly in favor of C9. Experience slightly in favor of C9. And it looks like Thanos is going to make his way over into the mid lane. But soon, it's gonna, soon he's going to find out that movement speed buff is gone. Zalia actually hits level 5 before Spoo hit level 4. He's starting to catch up here, but Zalia definitely has the advantage. And at first I was questioning, saying, how did he do it? And then I'm thinking to myself, it's Zalia's baby. <laughs> Never question. Let's look at Hyrox's face. If we can see him in real life, he's going to walk by it. Does he see it yet? Looks like yeah, Bacchus probably actually walked over and saw that for him, so we might already know that move speed is gone there. That is stolen away, but at this point, we're going to see kind of Zeus side just push up the mid lane, make sure everything is clear and good to go. Mid camps won't be responding until another uh, minute and 30 seconds pass by. Uh, Zelia looking to head on home and pick up uh, the Stone of Gaia. You know, I expect to see Zelia pick up Sprint here, simply for the fact that, you know, he needs it for team fights and allows him to get right back into the team fight without using that tele for the lane. High Rock on the bottom side getting some farm and it uh, looks like Arachne is kind of looking for an option. Not really much to find here. Level 5, this is where Arachne shines. This is her absolute best level. It's going to allow her to use the ultimate, but it's still early enough in the game to where that poison is going to just do an insane amount of damage. Even after the nerf, it can do a lot of damage and very quickly at that. You know, taking a look at the build, you see the death's toll uh, more than likely going to have enough damage with that potion to be able to do enough to take down a character like Thanatos or a character like Zeus. But the goal is she has to find the ultimate combo it immediately with the stun from Noxious Fumes and hope to God they don't buy beads. Unfortunately for him, we do see beads getting picked up on both Spoo and Shadow Nightmare. You know, they know it's coming, and the two ways you can counter, or I guess three ways to shut down Arachne early. Number one, it's going to be vision. You see a lot of players, if they're up against an Arachne, they'll buy lots of extra wards, make sure they put them in good spots. So they see Arachne coming ahead of time and prepare effectively. The other thing is going to be the purification beats, getting that silence off your head and bringing Arachne into a poor situation and counteracting the fact that she relies on that lifesteal and silence to get the kill there. And, you know, we're also going to be able to see the rotations, right? The big numbers of grouping up. Uh, Arachne doesn't fight well in big groups. You want small skirmishes, you want to be one, 2v2, 2v1, make the numbers low enough where there's not big AOEs going down or she gets focused hard. So either rotate, get vision, or pick the purification beads. And we know Torch uh, is going to be capable of doing all three. The question is how quickly can they do them? Because the damage is going to come out, uh, whether they're in the, the mid lane from Sayo or the soul lane from Vamana. And even with the Neath ultimate across the way, they have a lot of damage potential if someone steps out of line. So still in the pause here, we're at the 326 mark in game. No first blood given up yet. Small amount of gold in favor of Cloud9. No points of contention, even pressured at this point. Gold Fury is not an option. No towers have really taken damage. It's just really up to how much harass can go on each side. Now we see Emilito on the wrong side of the map here. Looks like he's trying to get some pressure off, but ultimately we're not seeing too much we're just waiting for him to get back into the game here i think he might have been setting up for a gank on azalea but i think of all the people to gank in the game the baby would be the least viable i mean he's hard to kill he has great movement potential with clear right. path and unless a waxing moon hits to stop the dash away there really isn't much they can do to threaten him at all you know, clear the path is there, like you said, the CC community from the altar once he pops a Colossal Fury. And once he finishes that Stone of Gaia, he's going to have a lot of regeneration on, you know, you see the tick from Stone of Gaia, his passive is going to keep him alive. Uh, and also that, he's going to also have his ultimate ticking. I mean, he's very difficult to kill. And if, you ha if you're going to kill him, you have to somehow stop the clear the path and also burst him through the regeneration. He's a very difficult character to kill. Uh, you know, <laughs> I feel like Lil Mama's taunt, or Lil Mana's taunt is perfect here in the fact that he says, you should have banned me when you had the chance. That's something that's alien. <laughs> yeah, it's like his motto uh, right now. So, uh, you know, we're waiting for the the, the reconnect here from Emilito and, and looking at Amization, uh, it, it's very standard across the way. And I, I think it's going to come down to the fact that, you know, they don't really rely on Arachne for this lineup. They have Smek, 
playing Neath. They have Vimana played by Zalia. You know, they have Sayo, and they also have Suntouch on Sun Wukong, a very versatile, uh, you know, support character played by Suntouch, no less. You know, they don't have a huge focus on Arachne, which gives her a lot less pressure on her shoulders and also a lot yeah. more room to move around and do what she needs to do. So Torch... They're more of a contained fighting group. They have the Zeus Ultimate, the Chongo Ultimate, Thantos for the finish, Honors there as well, and then Bacchus. I think they really need to focus on being together at the right time and getting that good team fight off because split up, C9 has a bit of an advantage. Definitely. Their goal strictly is find two, pick them off. In the, in, even in a team fight where there's five, you've got to separate two of them and kill them immediately. That's going to help with the chain lightning, the hovering death, the intoxicate. Use as much of you can to pick off any specific person and Sayo. If you can get that Agni out of there, it's going to be strong enough for you to start pressuring the rest of the team little by little. Once Agni's dead and any other person, that'll let you get to the back line and start f chasing out that Arachne. You don't have to worry about her damage anymore. It'll lay let you chase down Smek. And of course, doing your best to avoid Zelia at all costs, because once he gets into that big baby form and he has that regeneration, Weakening Curse is going to be either necessary or you just have to get away from him. And we've seen that before. And the last time we saw Zalia play in tournament play, he went for that Weakening Curse activation. So he'll have that active possibly this game or something he'll be focusing on. You know, you see the heal coming out from Chunga, especially with that heavenly agility that they have on their team. It's something that's on the back of their minds. And like you said, you, you have to have a, a good start to the team fight because it's not a great recovery for Torch if things go uh, uh, awry uh, in this situation. So it's difficult for um, them to try and plan out the fights um, if things go bad. So they have to make sure that they're in a great position. They look for the perfect initiation, but C9 doesn't have very, very many holes. So you have to make sure that you, when you see it, you capitalize on it. No hesitation, because if they wait too long, all of a sudden the damage is going to start rolling in from multiple sources. Uh, we saw the back line, uh, the backfire, or the, the ultimate coming out of the rain fire, going to get some good stuns. You're also going to have Zaldia causing all kinds of havoc once he builds up enough defensive items to keep himself safe. In fact, the last time that we saw uh, Zalia play uh, Vamana in tournament, he went uh, for Stone of Gaia right into Hasten Fatalis boots and then Malice to round it off uh, with Weakening Curse for his active items. So a lot of attack speed. The Hasten Fatalis keeps him highly mobile and also prevents him from being slow during his ultimate. Uh, and then the Stone of Gaia, the movement speed, I mean, he's just incredibly damaging with that character. And it, it's, uh, uh, I mean, how do you plan out a good initiation for Torch? Honestly, it's it's basically just picking off one by one. They can't all in. If they all in, they're going to get countered. I mean, Smek has healing. You can't kill Sun Wukong. You can't kill Baby, at least not in the initial engagement. It has to be small, concise attacks. Whittle them down little by little. They need to use their range to their advantage. The only issue is that entire strategy is countered by the fact that if they hang back, they're going to take Agni Bombs to the face. Yeah, that damage is going to be incredible, and you know that Sayo is going to start building up that penetration. He loves going for boots straight into Focus Void Stone. The penetration is going to be huge, and no matter how little magic protection they have early on, it's going to be shredded away. So they have to be careful about how they rotate, and we know with high mobility from Sayo on Agni, he's going to be hard to gank. Same thing goes for Vaughn on the side lane. Across the way, you have a Neath with a Sun Wukong. I think that if Torch really wants to start taking this early game, they want to try and pick off that Smek early on, start putting pressure on him because it's going to be difficult to take out Aki. It's going to be difficult to take out Fomana. In the jungle, they have Arachne, who Arachne is very good uh, at you know having those rotations and fighting in place, but if yeah. you start moving around the map a lot, Arachne has trouble with that because she has to try and catch up, get those hooks. Uh, if she gets a good pick, though, it's important, but as long as you're able to react to her properly, that may be a weak spot for C9. So let's uh, check in with the admins here. Do we have any updates? Okay, it looks like uh, they are going to be back into the game. We are on a three-minute delay, so we're just waiting uh, to catch up to the teams. It looks like uh, I think they've exhausted their pauses here, uh, but they're going to be starting up in just a few seconds. Again, uh, Cloud9 does have a very small advantage, uh, 396 gold, 779 experience. Nothing too crazy at 326. Sure. I mean, it, that could be a, a, a creep wave and a half, really. It's not too much to worry about. Um, the only issue is... Emilito right now has decided he's going to go into the guard boots. More than likely, we're going to see him going into the Midas boots. Over on the right side, Suntouch has just opted for, it looks like, level one boots. Now, this could go Midas. This could go Tabi. I'm very interested to see what he's going to do. Um, previously, we actually saw Emilito's Sun Wukong pick up Frostbound Hammer, which I think is a very interesting pickup. There's some health on it, and then, of course, that ever-annoying pass of the slow 
Yeah, it's huge. Um, the slow is so important, and it's an item that really doesn't see a whole lot of play because it has a small subset of uses. Um, and, you know, let's talk a little bit about High Rock on Thanatos in the jungle here. The last four games that High Rock played in tournament play, he played Chalk every single time. He also won every single one of them. So he is able to get those early starts. Uh, of course, he yeah, had the uh, the pick in the uh, bronze match last time and, and the preliminaries going forward today. So he's able to get that out. That gets banned out. So Chalk was banned today by C9, focusing basically on the fact that High Rock was playing so fantastically with that Chalk. And now going to Thanatos, he's comfortable with Thanatos. In fact, High Rock is going to be posting a uh, 2.40 KDR with Thanatos, one for one, one win, one loss in his history uh, playing Thanatos in tournament. So it's a much better character for him than we've seen on Thor, than we've seen on Bastet as the game gets un unpaused here. And we're back underway with this matchup. And, you know, Keep an eye on Thanatos, see if he's able to get those dunks, see if he's able to get in on those team fights and, and make something happen, or will he fall short? All right, so I, I don't know if we're, if we're going to see him fall short. I mean, a lot of the late game potential in, this, in both teams is kind of small. I think of everyone in the game, our hardest carries aside from the Hunter really is going to be Zelia. That baby starts to hit so, so hard in the end game. He really does, and you can see that Zelia has more damage potential on the character than uh, other people who play him. You see, you know, Omega going for high uh, protection and more of a bruiser state, whereas uh, you know Zelia goes for boots, Ace and Fatalis, Malice, like hard amounts of uh, attack speed, damage, crit. He really likes that uh, that focus on damage, and with the way that Zelia plays, he's so careful and he treads lightly with the way he decides to position himself that he gets away with it, and that's why he's so scary with that character. Chain Lightning do a lot of damage to Sire, dropping him down to 200 HP, and now they're going to contest the mid camps. Oh, mid camps get stolen on the left side. Hand of the gods gets used, but the Jingu Bong picks up both of them right there. Sayo dashing right through the Zeus ult, leaving a path of flames as he burns his way past the lightning. Shadow Nightmare Hook, not going to miss Frostyak, trying to get a 1v1 with High Rock, not going to get it. <laughs> uh, didn't schedule that interview properly, and High Rock's going to walk away. Uh, going to go over to the movement speed buff and pick that one up. Looks like right side, Changa has returned to a devastated solo lane here. Vomana doesn't even have any way to get back to the lane. Uh, no teleportation, no, teleportation, no uh, uh, sprint or anything along those lines, but does have tier 3 Sonic guy, steady magical protection, 25 HP 5, 10 MP 5, and regenerates 2% of his maximum health every 5 seconds. And I guess Chong Go, no. it's gonna be that bad. Left side, Sun Touch going in. Death side, can he get away? Not a good look. I don't think he realized that High Rock was in the neighborhood as well. He goes in, he gets the hand of the gods, he steals it. But at what cost? He goes down first, blood given up in favor of a rather minute mana buff is gonna skyrocket the experience lead for Cloud9. And check it out 347 gold, still in between. You know, this this could be the fact that... Oh, Hook in the mid lane, going on to Thanos. There's the silence. The Broodlings are doing work. Neath Ultimate. High Rock guaranteed a... No, Shadow Nightmare. Broodlings. The babies don't work. Now getting a slow on Zeus. The last thing the baby does before it dies is slow Shadow Nightmare. The bomb's going to come down. Path of Flames. Flame Wave is available. Just needs one more shot to do it. Sile pops up the dash, but can't get the distance. Honors here to protect. Just swinging at air is Bum Ball. Just saying, <laughs> warding off evil spirits. With that shot there, the baby's doing work, and Thanos will go down, and C9 answers first blood with second blood. Clear the path used to try to get back to lane. Baby steals away the blue buff. That's going to hurt Chunga a lot. She is a very mana-intensive character to really be able to sustain in the lane, to really get use of her passive, which allows her to move quickly, or her other passive, which allows her to send the bun back to the base to get some items, neither of which can be really used. Nice dodge coming out from Emilito in the mid lane, able to get away from that Tiger Sun Touch, continues his onslaught here, knocks up the bird to ensure that it does not get the stun off, but still, nice play coming out from Emilito, using that pause time effectively, able to come back fresh. Oh, fresh as ever. zelia has got that sort of guy done, so he's going to refresh himself up every single time he takes damage here. And uh, Chunga has her work cut out for her. She's going to pop up some damage to make sure the minions do go down. And honestly, we don't see a whole lot of Chunga in tournament play. And Spoo, uh, definitely a, a player who's been playing so long enough to be able to activate her, her hidden potential here. But we'll see how that fares uh, going forward. You're going to have to deal with the Vomana. I think the solo lane is going to be a bit of a moot point uh, for now. The rotation is going to be the biggest thing. Emily took some damage here, killing off those baby stuns out the broodlings, but they are working hard to catch right up there as this does take down. There's some basic attacks coming out from Zeus, make sure that the broodlings do go down. Hook comes out, grabbing Bacchus, needs ultimate, there goes the silence! Every single time Frostyak finds a target and eats it!
<laughs> he's he's using the ability correctly. He's not waiting for his perfect moment. He's not waiting for the pitch. He's he just open. seeing an opportunity. I'm going to take that. 30-second cooldown. If it happens, it happens. I'll see you in a minute. Right? Takes it, earns another kill for Cloud9. And this is a character that needs to get ahead. If she is ever behind, she is just useless. I mean, that's the kind of, that's the fall to her. She doesn't do any... Did Spoo just use Waxing Moon to clear the wave? Yes. Okie doke, oh, he's heading back he to the base. Have, he haven't agility to get back, so he's going to have to use that if he wants to get there. Does he have the Disney Hill sub? There's the mana. I think he should just pop it and go. Is he going to go? There goes uh, activation. 90 no, seconds cooldown. Thanatos is going to come back. Yeah, it's tough. It's not sprint. You know, it's not sprint. It's not teleport. It's something that you want to use. As stasis mode comes out here, looks like we're going to get uh, chopped up. Are you hitting this? Yeah. It looks like we're going to hit this. This could be uh, a number of things. We're going to see if we can give it a moment and get this caught back up here. So we're going to wait for that one right now. But look at this match. One to two. It looks like the uh, stats is, is going the way of C9. Now finally, as it does catch back up, thankfully, uh, looks like that's going to be pushing out as we're stuck on the, the, the hit here. Uh, we're actually going to go ahead and pause it um, and let this all get synced up. In fact, let's go ahead and cut to a brief uh, uh, screen here and just make sure that this is, gets a, a good headroom. So we'll be back in just a moment. We're getting all sorted out. Uh, go Go ahead and, and cut that out here. So we'll be back in just about 30 seconds to a minute, guys. We'll make sure this is all good to go. We don't want to make sure. We make sure basically that this game is as, as prime as it can be. So stick around. We'll be back in just about 30 seconds to a minute. Alrighty, welcome back, everybody. We're underway here, two to one in Torch versus C9. Making sure that is all solved up. The game is good to go now. Shenanigans take some harassment in the mid lane, but he will survive. Frosty going into the jungle camp, looking to pick up these mid camps. High Rock is here as well. 
Again, to reiterate, we got 1,400 gold and 3,000 experience in the way of C9 in the lead right now. But it's a modest lead. Indeed. I mean, it's only a couple. I mean, it's like 1,300 gold. At this point in the game, split up between however many players, you're not really going to see too much come out of that. But they can skyrocket. I mean, a few more. Oh, Frosty F looks for the pole. Just barely dodged, but the baby's doing work here. Going up the hovering. Death is ready. There's the crescent moon dance. I don't want to see Sayo come over here. He's just going to fall as well if he tries to. Frostyak turns his sight, actually manages to dodge it by jumping on Chung Ah's head with the drain life. I can't even understand how that was able to go down the way it was. Unbelievable play, a little bit of luck, a little bit of fate, and Frostyak's going to get out of there. And jump right on top. He's going to survive the time beneath. Ulta coming out there. Looks like it's going to hit uh, the Chango, who avoided it, actually. Mid camps have been taken out. The pass is taking on Shadow Nightmare. Actually forced to go home here quite low. Arden has one more bomb, though. Shadow Nightmare airing on the side of Caution, making sure he doesn't go down to a passive ultimate. Going to go path the flames on the wave and then bomb. Shadow Nightmare pretty slow here. Going for the opportunity. Soul Reef is available. There's the silence going down. It's Death Scythe not going to land. Flame wave. This is going to be it. High Rock. High Rock, can he get it? One more shot. Sayo's here as well. Basically, that come out. The minion. Sayo gets the kill. That is why the minions are number one in small engagements. And that's going to be enough for Sayo to get a double as Zeus went down as well. So you see Hyrax build here. And what he was looking for is he you saw him auto-attacking the air. He was looking to get that third hit on all of the creeps at once to give himself some of his health back. Of course, Death's Hole going to give five health back every time he lands an auto-attack. So he would have gained 15 right there, maybe cleared the wave and might have had a chance to get that one last attack. But Sayo was just too quick about it. Allowed him. It didn't give him enough time to get all that done and then burst. World Weaver getting charged. Looks like they're going towards the right lane. She gets pulled out. They don't silence in time. Heavenly Agility's out, but she gets the silence. She takes the stun. The healing has been good, though. Waxing Moon under the tower. That was 214. This one could be enough. Oh my god, he gets out. He does get outside the tower range. Uh, it looks like the damage was reset at the tower line. That would have killed him had he been half a second later. Rockets playing wave mid lane. No bombs available for Sayo. Shadow Knight are very low. The pressure is insane. High Rock forced to come over and defend as uh, Agni's putting so much pressure down the front door. Witch Stone selected as the third item after Hasten Fatalis here for the Vomana. Going to slow down the basic attacks of the On Her as well as the Thanatos, as well as picking up some protection and movement speed for himself. Honestly, may not even need boots for a while if he's going to go down that road. Across the way, Vomana's going to get the blue buff. I'm make sure that is on the ground and pick it up for himself. Thanatos is going to spot it out here, but at this point, C9 is getting a uh, Further and further ahead, and Torch, Torch needs to be careful about the, the snowball effect. Speaking of snowball effects, check out Zalia here. Just running at Thanatos, something not normal for players at this level, especially considering he's level 10. This is where Death Scythe is generally going to be its strongest, and Zalia just takes the hit, no problem whatsoever. Two Frostiac. levels ahead on the right side as well. Frostyak lying in wait here, waiting for his prey to show up. Looking at the wards, does he have anything in sight? Then he's going to go down and evade it for the time being. This is kind of all Frostyak is doing. He's just waiting for an opportunity to pick someone up, watching someone come by, seeing if they're going to go and walk through his pack and, and you know, kind of just step on the proverbial spider web and react to it immediately. And that's all he's doing here. And I think that's a great choice considering the fact that Torch, uh, you know, their, their early game is not as strong as you'd expect. So but trying to shut him down early is going to be huge here. They're going to rotate her on her too far forward. There goes a rotation coming out. They're going for the Gold Fury. There goes the Neath Ultimate. Desert Fury comes out as well. There goes uh, Arachne joining in the fight. Belly Flop comes out. Spirit Arrow come through. Intoxicate gets avoided by the jump into so uh, So Wukong gets picked off immediately, but there's the first damage. Zeus Ultimate on the ground. There's the web. Path of Flames. One more bomb coming down. Is it going to hit home? It will. Emily to a very low, but no combustion available. Does he have a path? He does not. Does the Flame Wave hit? He's waiting for Ultimate to come up. Cooler does it come up. Cooler in time. Sayo, he's looking for it. He's not going to find it. Actually, the Fumes almost got the kill. And Zeus in the worst position possible, running upwards away from Zelia. Chilling on the ground, but the clear of the path is going to clear the distance. Shout out to Emerald Team Beat out of this one. Yeah, he's, he's going down there. Cloud9 able to find so much in that fight. 4,600 ahead after the Gold Fury. Multiple kills. Not to mention, they got a kill at the end of that engagement. Very, very end, which is so much better than getting a kill at the beginning because now everyone's going back to the farming phase. This is where people are allowed to go and just 
push as much as possible to ensure they can get as much gold and as much experience. And that's all wasted right now for Shadow Nightmare, who still has a few more seconds till he's even up. Hyrox's going to be forced away from his jungle to hold the mid lane because that tower is getting very low. Right now, Funball leading his team with 6,400 gold, but it pales into comparison to C9's gold right now. Just barely ahead of Frostyak and definitely ahead of Sun Touch, but behind Neath right now, played by Smek. Uh, it, it's a tough situation to be in. You see characters like Hyrock on Thanatos, who needs as much gold as he can possibly get. Uh, Sai on the mid lane just pressuring this. So I'm going to tank the tower for the time being, letting the minions get in their time. There it goes. Actually, basic attacks it down by himself. The epitome of man mode right now is just, I don't need minions. I'm going to take this tower out by myself right now. I mean, just get it done right there. You see the minions were able to pick that up. Sayo going back to the base as well. 13.45 on the clock, and we see the first tower going down. The Gold Fury down as well. Taking a look at the board here, we really don't have too much going on. Left side, World Weaver getting charged. They don't manage to find anything off. And in fact, Frosty X put himself in a pretty awful position as he takes the drink. And Melito very low is going to get picked up with Unravel. Super low on Mana right now. Smex relying on that blue buff to try to get him up. He's looking for a way to get that Spear Arrow off. Funball in an awful situation here if he doesn't retreat. And he does recognize the threat and leave. But looming in the shadows is the Hand of Death. Thanatos coming in here looking for the kill. He gets the silence, but he doesn't get the death sight. But look at this up into the air he goes. He's looking for the kill. Can he get his hovering above the Neath? He's not in range just yet. Actually, no longer in range as he decides to turn back and run away from that one. I think the call there for Taurus is the fact that why Fumball went in the first place. They knew that this was on the way. Get Neath low enough for me. I'll dunk down from the jungle on her forced to retreat when Sun Wukong was able to join in on the fun. Fun ball. Speaking of fun, great! Obelisk over there, blocking the transformed cat in place and avoiding the stun altogether. Fun ball in a great position to just head on home, clearing the wave, and just kind of feeling uh, feeling very home here. Gonna play the blue buff and then head home, looks like. Yeah, he's gonna do exactly that. Rod started up here by Sayo. He's uh, actually about 800 gold away from finishing it right now. Absolutely stunning. It's gonna be probably about a 17 minute to 18 minute Rod to Hootie for Sayo with full penetration. That's scary. Yeah, like he already has focused Void Stone. This is not like, he's not even rushing. It's not second item. He's going third item on top of the fact that he does have a Vampiric Shroud, which he could just sell at his whim. Uh, so he's close. I mean, 500-ish gold away before those bombs are going to start doing a number that's going to make all of Torch very uncomfortable. 15 minutes, 30 seconds in. There's Arachne looking for the shot. Going to be CC immune. Good activation from Howard predicting the hook there. Not wanting to get caught out. He knew once the silence chain came down, he would be a lot of trouble. Does not have purification beads or any real way to defend himself besides ultimate. Pops it early, pops it often. Feeling very comfortable about that. Right side rotation. Vamana's going to take a free tower here. Zalia, Sun Touch, Frost Deck all grouping up. Sayo waiting in the jungle for any rotations. It's not going to come out as the tower goes down for free. Left side, Neat left her own devices as Fun Ball goes home. This tower is going to take some damage as well as Smek gets more and more farmed up. And again, as long as Smek is keeping Fun Ball here, Smek can contribute to team fights with that ultimate on her cannot. So this is going to be a good situation for C9 right now. 8-3. to three. They're looking to control the mid game. And that's what they're doing right now. I mean, they have the gold. They have the experience. They have the push. I mean, Smek right now, a level ahead of Fumballs, is just boxing on her. It's not something you normally do. And look how she came out of that fight. She did about 60% of his health, and she's full. Arachne looking for a hook in the jungle across the way. Not going to go for it. See too many players grouping up. They're going to ping out Zalia here as he walks through the jungle to the right side. A lot of pings coming out here. There's rewards all over the map right now. Uh, left side is mainly for C9. Right side is both Torch and C9 coverage. Uh, actually, more, more towards the Torch side as they get a lot of vision in front of the Fire Giant area. Executioner being picked up second for Frostiak on Arachne. Just trying to get as much penetration damage as, as he possibly can. Right side, uh, it looks like Spoo's going to be harassed out heavily by Vamana, even with that breastplate of Valor forced back towards her tower. Again, Frostyak lying in. Wait, this is all he's doing. He's just camping for hooks. Can he get here comes Thanatos. Frostyak, no CC immunity gets activated. He's just forcing him to ult defensively every time. Yeah, and the one time he was able to use it offensively, he was forced out anyway by Sun Wukong. He actually goes back in. Uh, he gets an execute. I saw on the screen, but that was actually just a minion. I got hyped. <laughs> <laughs> that minion died!
Hook on Bach in slow motion, grabbed up, silenced the follow. Neath Ultimate, where is it? Doesn't even prime it. The Gold Fury is still being tanked by Spec. Neath Ultimate being knelt on. I have a shot out here. A Soul Rape on three players, getting forced out of the Zeus Ultimate. Is Frosty a Desert Fury coming through? Emily's oh still alive somehow. Sun Touch goes down. Oh, he's going down. God. Shadow is already down. Now we have a Frosty Act. He gets away. It's a 3 0 oh, exchange. Zalia by himself. Big baby activation. Beatbox mode has been engaged. Going after Shadow, but the Heavenly Agility is going to get some distance here. Huge play and big pickup. Now we're going to fumble, fumble. He wants a bug. He wants to pick this off here. Desert oh. Fury is down, but the Impale goes down. It's a four for one exchange in favor of Torch. Give it up and chat, ladies and gentlemen. Zalia by himself. What can you do? Desert Fury is not available. Again, no ultimates in the game are that are still alive. And now the I Gold Fury is exposed. Everybody at home should be raising their fun balls right now. He not only saves Emilito, but picks up a two-kill swing with Desert Fury, saves the rest of the team, walks in, and then bang, Spoo comes in there. Heavenly Agility slows everybody out, ensures that the big baby does no damage, and now they're still behind. If by a fair amount, it's still 4,600 in favor of Cloud9, but they're showing they're willing to fight. Not only willing to fight, but they're, they still have it. I mean, that, that was in insane. I, I can't express in words. Fun Ball's brilliance in that fight. We're seeing so many strong Hunter plays today. Uh, on her underneath, especially the, the main picks for the day, uh, able to shut down a lot of picks, uh, shut down a lot of team fights. And, you know, that came down to the fact that they initiate with Phantos Soul Reap. Get the silence off. Zeus ultimate on three players immediately. The detonate came out after, and on her just came out strong. He's so farmed right now for his team. He's about 1,300 gold ahead of his mid laner. That is fantastic farm potential from Fumball. Across the way, a great farm potential for Sayo and Zalia as they're able to stack up about 10.4k each, but at the same time, Fumball making the plays. That's exactly what's going to happen. On the aftermath, this they're going to steal away a blue buff, clear out the left side. That blue buff is going to be left on the ground, actually, as Smek just uh, backflips away from that one. Fumball's here to greet them to the lane, but, you know, Torch showing, showing signs of life, and that's going to bring down that lead a little bit. You know, the issue, though, is they're majorly down in level still. Zalia 19, Sayo 19, comparatively to 16 and 16 on Shadow Nightmare and Spoo. So there's still a lot of a lot of ground to make up. But they're showing that with proper teamwork and communication and maybe a little bit of greed from Cloud9 that there is still a little bit light left on top of that torch. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's what's keeping them burning bright right now. And they're going to show the world what they're made of. Smek's going to get a malice here. Zalia finds High Rock in the jungle. It might be another defensive ult, but indeed it is. Burst damage comes out. I mean, it's so hard to play Thanatos if every ult you have is used to defend yourself. There goes some minion clear again. Uh, going to execute some minions with that hovering death right now. If you're going to kill something, you may as well kill some minions there. Frost going to go directly into this Witch Stone here. Uh, looking again, this is all Frost has been doing. He just sits in the jungle, puts an egg down, sits on it, waits for someone to walk by. He is just uh, a spider turret waiting for someone to run in the wrong direction. So really not much to fight for right now. No one's really getting too aggressive, except for unkillable Zalia right now, who is sitting 2-0-1. He dived into three people before and walked out of that fight like nothing even happened. Now you know why his KD is so high. He's just KD's I high, he never die. Yeah, it's true. Left side, Left side. Ball. Oh boy, this is tough. Uh, that was beads and sprint. All of his actives are down, which means that, that turret's gone. There's nothing they can do to defend it at this point. Emilito is here, but really, if they want to push for this, they can take it. But it looks like Cloud9 is going to play the safe route, which is respectable. They don't want to get over aggressive. They don't want to put themselves in a situation where Torch can make another comeback because one more team fight like that is going to swing it too far in their favor, and that's going to be Fire Giant time. Billy flop away. Emily trying to find someone. There's Intoxicate. Thanos here. The silence is out. There's Sunta trying to get the bird. Not going to get Somersault. Uh, Cloud is available. Web on the ground. Make sure he slows down. Thanos is up in the air. Does he dunk the decoy? Or is he looking for opportunity to go into the, the hit there on the Arachne? He's just going to ult. I'm not sure why Thanatos ulted there. Maybe he thought the hook was going to come and didn't want to get hooked by it and just fall down. And that was a little bit just, skittish. Did he just ult the decoy? No, he just flew away. He came back down on the decoy. Could use it for the heal. Oh, Maybe. Rack. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I, Frostyak. No distance, though. It's not going to reach. It's not going to reach, and they know it. And they they see that he's waiting in the wings. And check this out. Thanatos actually not going to go for Arachne. They're by themselves here. Emilito is getting low. Arachne's just coming around the other side. She just wants to help push this tower down here, but they don't have the creeps for it. One set of babies ready to go. 
Right side, Chung Ah just holding on to this tower for dear life. She doesn't want to let that 1,500 gold go to waste. You see Agni pushing out some meteors here to clear the wave. Sun Touch allowing the creeps to get inside. That is a completely dead tower. Free 1,000 gold for Cloud9. Right side, Zelia not letting up like you said. He just pushing this down. Left tower does go down in favor of C9. Now pressing the tier 2 tower. Bacchus is here, but what can he do with his minion wave still bearing down on top of Belch the Gods? Going after a rat, he's trying to slow her down. Impale comes out. This is a big fight for Torch. The tower is down. No advantage here. Silence comes out. Chain line and look for the dead end. The Zeus only comes out as well. Smek in a lot of trouble. He backflips away. Does he have three charges on top of him? Looks like he has no charges there. Agni goes down, Benetos in the sky, hovering above, looks like it's gonna get Sun Touch, the x goat is real, Smek dashing away with the sprint, how far can he get though? Benetos is following up, there's Frosting, left side, look for it, fun ball, fun ball, fun ball, impale, purification beast, not gonna be a belly flop on top, there goes that death side, and death is what Frostiac has received, Zelia joins in, but too little, too late, intoxicate in celebration, that's not gonna hit anyone there, but it certainly <laughs> is cool to watch the minions, are bearing down, but what a wonderful team fight for Torch. That was a great team fight for Torch. It puts them ahead in kills, but not nearly ahead in gold. Still 7k down. They need to take something off this. They have to press their advantage. I don't know why they're backing. All of them should have just went right to the Fire Giant and burst that thing down. You see them rotating towards the right side of the map, but Suntouch has already respawned. Funball now kind of just sitting in the mid lane. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be going back too. High Rocks rotating over, but too little too late. No objective taken off of this. In fact, they lose a Tier 2 for it. I, I don't know that it was worth it for them. Bacchus in the mid lane, gonna find some broodlings here again, you know, like you said, they need to get some objectives here. And that's a big, big weakness. The, the Gold Fish can be started by a C9 right there as we go on top of it. I mean, they're starting the Gold Fury right now. They're going after it, and this is exactly what Torch needed to do themselves. They needed yeah. to get in and get some objectives, but they're just going to give it to C9, and the gold is going to get bigger and bigger. They don't even have vision here. They're not even making their way over. I mean, they're down in towers. They haven't gotten a single tower this game. The objectives are what's going to be, uh, you know, more nails in the coffin for Torch. They're getting the team fights. They just need to have the follow-up. You know, Everyone always talks about how skilled, you know, X player is or how mechanically great, but that isn't what makes a smite team successful. Being able to outplay your opponent, of course, is a very important skill, but 100%, it's the ability to earn gold and experience, and that's not always kills. That's objectives, that's gold fury, that's towers, and sometimes that's plainly just minions, and this is what Cloud9 has done. They're down a kill right now, and yet they're up so much gold. They really are, and that's the biggest thing about this, is they're able to, uh, you know, keep the gold lead alive regardless of how many team fights they end up losing. A pause coming out here, it's going to unpause right after as they get underway yet again. Right side being pressured heavily going on top of this one. Will it be enough? They're going to rotate over. There's Thanet's host. There's a Soul Reap on top of Frostiac. No uh, Scythe available afterward. The heal from Chunga. This is a big engagement for Torch. C9 on the defensive. They have all ultimates available on both sides. A lot of hurry up and wait here, not wanting to go in preemptively or possibly bot and engagement. C9 still has the goal. It's just to be very careful for Torch. Unravel's going to go off, get Smek topped off. Jumping in, Belly Flop's going to miss, as will Spirit Arrow. You're going to see the Umbrella Rank come out. Left side, High Rock forced up into the air. A lot of the bombs already down. What is he going to look for here? He's in the back line. He's looking for a chance. He does land on the Frostiac with the Execute. But unfortunately, four members of Torch are stacked up on that gigantic baby. And watch High Rock get bursted down. Zalia super low as well. But I don't know if they're going to be able to find it. That 5% per second is enough. He's low now. Shadow Nightmare trying to get the detonate off. He's going to get the kill. No, he won't. Zalia lives. He goes down. Torch on the ropes here, losing three for one. What an incredible engagement for C9, and that's exactly what we're talking about. You put them in a corner, they're going to respond very, very heavily there, and it's exciting to see how quickly that can change. Fire Giant now being taken here by C9. Not a whole lot of Torch can do about it. That gold needs to get bigger and bigger and bigger. 9,000 gold, Fire Giant buff. Torch just needs to have a focus on objectives, but they've proven that they can team fight head to head with C9. And Roche comes out, Spirit Arrow on the ground, Spoo in a trouble situation. Sunshine's dropping low. The Fire Giant might kill Sun Ukong, the Mighty. Will it be enough? It's going to come down. Fist of the Gods, <laughs> Head of the Gods comes down, and he immediately flies away. Fumball was on his way, but just could not hit it. Spoo is trying to make something happen there. If, honestly, if, if he had the Waxing Moon prepped and ready to fly, I think he might have found a little bit more there, possibly one or two kills, maybe even would have gotten out, but unfortunately for him, it did not play out that way. Cloud9 
finds the fire giant. They find a free kill as well. And now they have the opportunity to go back, heal up, spend some of that gold. And it's only going to make them stronger. Look at Zalia right now. Level 2 on the Deathbringer. I would be extremely fearful. Malice, Witchstone, Hasten Fatalis, Deathbringer. These are not items you expect to see on a Vamana. He's heavily focused on damage. And once he starts to get going... It, it, it's hard to slow him down, and with the Hazen Fatalis, the Sprint uh, Tier 3, the ultimate activation, you can't get him off you. He's unpeelable. He's just going to stick to you and just do that little rain dance on top of you, and you're going to take tons and tons of damage, especially when the crits start coming out. Ferocity, if you're going for a heavy damage build as well, Smek in the same boat. They're putting a lot of pressure on Sun Touch for uh, you know the, the tank initiation, but at the same time, Torch just doesn't have the gold be able to be able to hold on to this. I mean, 11,700 gold, the right tower is going to go down, C9 yet again has all six towers up, as we saw in the semifinal round. What do you do against this team? Honestly, it doesn't seem like you could do very much. Zalia still hasn't died. I just, this is why his K to, death, or K to D is so high, is because he never actually is killed. He's level 20 right now. He's 403. He's highest gold in the game. Damage right now, he, it looks like he's actually on top of that as well. I, wh what do you do? Yeah, well, they're going to try and do something here as this initiation comes out. There's the Finn and Toast jumping in. They're going to military on the backside as well. Spoon next to an Opalus. There goes the Zeus ultimate. The dead day might be enough. Emily dropping quite low, but still alive. Fun ball coming through. Desert Fury coming out here. Spoon avoids a lot of damage on the follow-up there. Frostiac already did on her. The most majestic jump you will ever see. Vomana over there. Beatbox mode activated. Here comes the rain dance of death. The crits are coming out. Zalia still chasing down. He's getting two kills inside of the base. The Titan of Order is left in all. High Rock in the back end. There goes another oh, kill. A triple God. kill for Zalia. The baby is undeterred. Crit after crit. A quadra kill for Zalia in front of the Phoenix. Don't give the baby to Zalia. That looks like it's going to be it, guys. They have fun. they have minions in there. Zalia somehow earning four kills in that engagement. Smex there. Nobody's coming up. Emilito's not up for four as the Titan is going down. Cloud9 wins game one. GG. Look at the smug look on, on Vamana's face right now. He's just throwing <laughs> his bat around, stretching. Uh, and this is kind of like the calm before the storm. He's slowly building up his itemization. He's slowly building up his takeness. And I feel like C9 just never felt the sweat that came. They had the focus on the, the objectives. They had the focus on the, the proper things. Torch, I, I think, was, was too distracted by the 